All right. Uh, so first off of that, I'd like to welcome Michael Hansen to the team. Um, Hello. Some of you uh, may have encountered him as uh, the creator of Raspi. Uh, and so we're very excited to have him uh, on board. Um, today, uh, one of our major tasks is going to be figuring out what is he going to do here? <laughs> Not that there's a shortage of tasks, but uh, we should figure out what's the best thing for him to work on. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, talk about that, um, and um, uh, we should go over the uh, sprint status, um, see how we're doing, and, um, and yeah, just check in with everybody. So uh, so let's do that. Um, Ken had some very interesting things to say last week, uh, and Chris Bear wasn't here. At, so uh, so we'll start with Ken and uh, see what you got up to. Uh, I am, well, I, I gave uh, Gez the code to capture the debus statuses um, so that we would have that during the boot process so we could see what's going on during their AW Connect sessions. Uh, but from what I hear from Gez, it seems like everything's working fine. Um, the, the other issue I'm working on is TTS and getting the TTS Mimic one to be part of the TTS uh, infrastructure, if you will, and see if I can keep them from stepping on each other. Um, it's interesting because normally um, what I'd like to do is create sessions uh, at a very high level or at least a low level with the audio service so that you can make sure you're not going to you know, overwrite somebody else. We, that's not kind of our architecture. We just a play out there. Um, and it's not clear to me what I want to do about that here, because it's almost like mimic one and mimic two should be interleaved, which is kind of a weird situation, but might be desirable. So you're, you know, speaking and mimic two goes out. Uh, at least you can um, pick up with mimic one and continue. So I don't know that that's a goal or not, but that's what I'm working on now. Okay, well, it sounds like maybe we should have a, a quick team chat about what that goal should be, uh, and what the what the intended uh, uh, system behavior is. Uh, exactly. One of those situations where we kind of inherited what what was done before, and uh, um, it's certainly not clear to me what the intended behavior was. But uh, the way it's behaving now is not good. So um, this was only highlighted. Uh, last in the last week or so when we uh, uh, the mimic 2 server uh, was half down um, and we had uh, therefore some intermittent mimic 2 problems or delays and uh, that caused mimic one to get triggered and so we had Mycroft talking over itself sometimes you know the mimic one and mimic 2 playing at the same time different things uh, which is just an architecturally untenable situation. Like right? it should just never be able to do that, um, unintentionally anyway. So, um, so that's what Ken's looking into uh, untangling that there. Uh, and it looks like you know just to uh, um, give a little more background on it. It looks like it's because Mimic One and Mimic Two are not treated uh, symmetrically. Like Mimic One is sort of baked into the system at a low level, rather than being treated uh, like a service like Mimic Two is. Uh, that's my, my layman's uh, uh, view of it. Uh, so, um, so yeah, that needs to be uh, sorted out. So we'll, we can have a discussion about that, uh, or you guys can have a discussion about that after. Um, so, okay, cool. Thanks, Ken. Let's see. Um, Derek. All right. So yeah, yeah. Basically, on the team. Me, it's about the same stuff. Working on the CAD um, updates for the mechanical changes for the Mark II. Um, but yeah, since Mike, Mike, you didn't, you didn't get to talk before um, now. Uh, so my role is, is uh, the, the designer on the team, and um, I do the mechanical. Uh, well, I'm getting industrial design background, but uh, so I, we don't have a mechanical engineer, so I end up doing kind of mechanical CAD as well. Um, but uh, here in these meetings, typically, I, I try to contribute more on the software side, 
although lately I've just been really swamped on, on the mechanical stuff. So things like um, user experience and design, um, you know, on the voice assistant side, that, that'd be like uh, the voice, you know, interaction, the dialogues and things like that. And then on um, the graphics side, I, I do all the, the GUI mockups. We use Figma um, to do all that. And uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, I kind of cover the gamut of design stuff. Um, but the, the thing related that, that I do want to jump in on when needed is, is on the Wi-Fi setup. Um, I've been kind of noodling on it a little bit and talked to Gez about some of, of my thoughts. And I think he was in agreement. And it's just that when we um, lose Wi-Fi connection, uh, what do we do? And, um, you know, I think in the past we've actually, I'm not even sure the state of it right now, but, you know, if um, it's in the middle of the night and you just yell out, you know, lost internet connection, you know, set up Wi-Fi again, that's not going to be a great experience, right? Uh, of course, we don't have internet. We can't do speech to text. So we're, you know, got some tricky things there too. So how do we fire off uh, Wi-Fi setup when we want to uh, in that situation or just uh, quietly let Mycroft continue to try and reconnect to your existing Wi-Fi, um, assuming it could possibly just be an outage. So there's some tricky things around that that I want to talk about um, once, once we get there. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I want to avoid yelling at our uh, <laughs> customers in the middle of the night. Yeah, I love the idea of a robotic voice screaming Wi-Fi out. At the yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We don't want that. So, um, yeah. So anyway, that's that's what I'm up to. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Um, always seems like there's more to do. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you know, we can still do the wake word, right? So, you know, uh, you could sit there quietly. Micro could sit there quietly trying to reconnect, just waiting for the user to interact. Um, you know, once they interact, then, you know, they say, hey, Micro, wake up and, you know, wake up the device. Then we can present them some options. Um, of course, I think the problem then being is selecting options when you really only have, hey, Micro as an input. <laughs> uh could be problematic so but there's ways around it there's some ideas i've had it so um you at least have mimic one available right to to speak back something and i don't know if yeah. you could play you know there's that little ding that plays when you say hey mycroft i don't know if there's like a different sound you would play that indicates you know i'm awake but something's wrong right yeah and we can do lights you know we can change the lights to like orange or something to show there's kind of you know an error state and we can throw on a gooey you know yeah. We've got a touch screen and some buttons for interaction if we need it. So yeah, yeah, and that that's why we can do that for sure. And but do but then again, do we want to have a totally touchless voice only? No, option? I don't care. We remember we're designing for the Mark II. That's true. Um, okay. The yeah. Uh, ultimately, yeah, obviously. Uh, but you know, in my view, intents are intents. Whether they're touch, uh, you know, conveyed via touch, gesture, uh, voice buttons, whatever. I mean, I, I, I view them all as, um, you know, they should all be their own first class citizens. Um, right. Obviously, you know, we start off as a voice assistant, but um, I think that, uh, you know, we treat these things generically, we're going to have a much more robust system. Well, I mean, you know, the Mark 1, we had the button and, you know, the Mark 2, we have the action button. You know, that's one thing I thought about, just, you mm -hmm. know, give a prompt that says, if you'd like to start Wi-Fi setup for a new Wi-Fi, um, you know, press the button. If mm -hmm. not, I will continue to try to connect to your existing Wi-Fi. Right. Um, something like that. But anyway, um, yeah, we can get into the details on that. Yeah, just to... well, because it's also a, a mild security issue if you're like got this open access point that can then that it, that it is on when you're not even there to use the device, and someone else can like sit outside your home and connect your micro device to their own network, and yeah, unlikely, but it is a right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you so, may actually want a touchscreen prompt, right? For, so I mean, you have to press press the touchscreen button to finish the Wi-Fi setup. Just because of that issue, then they'd have to, you know, break into your house as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just just, just saying. So we're encouraging people to break into other people's houses. Got it. Um, <laughs> 
So yeah, whenever right. we get there. What if I'm being held hostage? <laughs> hey, Mycroft, call 911. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Well, we can train a safe wake word eventually, right? That's true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've talked about that. All right. Um, OK, yeah, thanks, Derek. Let's see. Uh, who's next? Uh, Ken talked. Des talked. Derek. Chris? Chris, do you have any? Um, oh, wait, yeah, so I. Um... I, I guess the biggest thing I need right now is to understand where we stand with, when I was talking to Mike to, earlier today about the startup sequence, I was like, okay, we get all the things started up. And then we have this blob of things I don't know that gets us from, um, or initialized to do we have an internet connection or not? And there's some logic in there that I'm not entirely sure how that's supposed to work or if Ken's gotten it to work. And then we have, you know, the Wi-Fi set up stuff that's, supposed to communicate, you know, be more smart than it is now. I don't know where that is. And then <clears throat> after that, we have pairing. So there's like a gap there that I think, it, as far as I remember, has been in Ken's court. I just don't know where that sits and where I need to pick up where we left okay. off and everything. Yeah, we, we were talking about this last week. Um, and. Uh, can can bend my ear for a, a little extra time afterwards and it um yeah i think we need to keep the mvp goal in mind uh while we're doing all of this because we're definitely trying to fix concrete problems right now with the boot sequence um but we should be trying to do the minimal necessary to fix those problems um uh you know if and only if the uh, the only way to fix those problems is to re-architect a thing or re-implement re it from scratch or just, you know, tear it out and replace it with something better. Should we do that, right? Um, because, uh, you know, the system is very close to working. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the flip side of that is that it might just be that we've chased things down to the point where we fixed all the easy stuff and all that's left is the hard stuff. So, you know, I don't actually know where we are. You guys are going to have to figure that out. Um, but um uh but yeah i think that you uh you and ken and, and michael should sit down and, and sync up on that afterwards and try to figure out what the what the game plan is uh because yeah the whole boot up sequence with respect to you know wi-fi um like whether or not an internet connection is needed or we have an internet connection um and um and then what skill runs after that and all that kind of stuff you know there's there's definitely um there's there's what's there now and then there's what i think would be the right thing uh and i don't i just don't know whether we need to fix what we have now or you know completely uh uh you know write a clean definition of what we want it to be so um yeah you guys you know sit down and go through our, our boot sequence document and and see if um you know see if there's a a, a simple way to just get from here to there um we had we had some goals that were outlined in that document i don't recall them off the top of my head um but um but yeah see how many of those those things that we can tick off without having to redo everything um but if we do need to redo anything you know um we should uh we should do it right we should do it properly i think um that's my inclination anyway um which means that rather than just going out and doing something that's different uh, than what we have now, and then coming back and saying, here, here's the thing we did. Um, I think the right, the right thing to do is, you know, have some discussions about, okay, what are our objectives? What does the system architecture need to be? Uh, you know, open it up to the community, get their input, you know, make sure we have a clean spec that we all understand and then go implement it. And that, so that whole process is a lot bigger uh, than you know, just fixing some bugs. So, um, I don't know. Uh, again, I'll just I'll let you guys tell me what you think is uh, is necessary. But that's so I'm not sure I understand how much rolling back of what we talked about in Hawaii are we doing here? Because None, are, we I mean, not, are we not concerned about the internet being up 
Um, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking about changing our objective. Changing the objective. I'm just talking about. Um, just keep an eye on the scope of the changes that we're making. That's all. And what have I done so far? That's. Oh, has... I'm sorry, Chris. I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't specifically talking to just you. Um, I'm just talking in general. But um, no, I don't know that you've specifically done anything out of scope or that you shouldn't have done at this point. I'm not. I wasn't commenting on your actual work because, frankly, I don't know what you've done. So, um, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what, what I, what's in the document is what I've proposed doing and okay. what I've kind of started doing. And I didn't know if if this, I, I guess I'm not sure what the impetus of this, of what you're saying is. Like, you know, if, if Ken bent your ear and, and suddenly if it, you, I have this kind of whoa kind of feeling to what you just said, and I, ah, I don't yeah. know where, where that's coming from. Got you. Um, uh, I can interject very quickly. All okay. I told Michael is I believe we're very close to being complete with the first release of the Mark II. And that if we focus on that, then we can get there before year's end. But if we go back and restructure everything, with the looking at the startup sequence to skill interactions, then we probably can't get there by by January first. What so, define everything? Well, but the, Ken, to be clear, you know the startup sequence is yeah. is a necessary function of getting the mark to, you know, to MVP, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think I think what Ken's uh, what's Ken saying is that you know let's keep the focus to making sure that the mark two works rather than designing a completely clean architecture that was is more you know generalizable um, if that makes any sense so for example let me give you for instance uh one thing that is is bothering me is and i think this will be near to uh michael hansen's heart is the idea that not every system is going to require the internet right uh, but the mark ii definitely does require the internet so let's fix the problem for the mark ii not think about what happens if you've got a completely offline system, right? We don't have to just you know figure out what the logic for that is, what the what the boot path is for that, because we're trying to get the Mark II to work, right? Um, and uh, and so you know that's a way where we can simplify the task at hand to just making sure the Mark II works. Uh, the boot logic should work for checking for the internet working because that's the thing that we need for the Mark II. We don't need to figure out what the what the boot path is if no internet is required like so there's there's a simplifying you know uh assumption that we can make that kind of thing that's that's all i'm getting yeah and, then, yeah, and looking at the whole bring up and net connect and, and access point stuff the question is does derek and gez do they think that this is good and working or do they think it needs to be restructured or are we good to move forward on that I mean, uh, what I produced last week was really just data that, or, or a script that could, during bring up, say, okay, I have a SSID and I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network or not, and it could insert that additional message on the message bus, and then we can react to that downstream in any way we want. But it's not clear to me that Derek and Gez are saying that the whole thing has to be restructured. And it's not clear that we have to do anything if Panacore fixes their bugs. So I think we need to look at that sequence from that perspective. But you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's really a Gez Derek call, I would think. Yeah. And so again, Chris, this wasn't. I, I don't. I'm. I think you're taking this as being directed at you, uh, but it's not. I mean, in fact, I think Ken's comments were as much aimed at me and my inclination to. You know, throw up my hands and say, "Oh my God, this thing's a mess. Let's just start over." Um, you know. So uh, anyway, just want to make that. Yeah, clear. But your response was in my question about what they've done over the last week. So. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you weren't here, so that was you know that it, it came up, and you weren't able to be part of that discussion. So. Um, so what, but I mean, with the Wi-Fi stuff, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a, to me, it's a total black hole right now. And that's bothering. Okay. Oh, That's okay. So, so clean initialization and when pairing skill can start. Yeah. So, Chris V, all I did last week was write the dbus code that um, on bring up or at any point in time 
monitors the status of the Wi-Fi connection and uh, determines whether it's active or inactive or if it's going through a configuration period. So that's it. That's all I did last week. And I gave that to Gez to put into a build because, as Gez had mentioned, it's kind of information gathering at this point because I know what it looks like when the Mark II is running, but what I don't know what it looks like is when a Mark II is first coming out of the box. And so I need to see, you know, when I burn a new build with this, it's kind of a chicken egg. I needed to have this script in there to be able to get that logging so I could see what I could detect while we were going through the AW Connect process, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's still, so that's we still don't know what we're doing between process initialization and knowing whether or not we have an internet connection. Um, yes. Right. In other words, in other words, are you saying that we don't have any control over the process, or are you saying we don't have any insight into the process? I'm saying we don't know how we're going to change. It's broken now. We don't know how we're going to fix it yet. Well, we know. No. Well, we know that Panacor has a bug in their container that they have to fix. What is that bug? What specifically is that bug? Well, yes, yeah, you can speak to that now. I thought that was about the reconnect issue, not about a boot, boot time issue. Well, so, you know, it's interesting because I reported that it wasn't reconnecting. They said they had a bug and they acknowledged that. They said it must be more than 10 months old. And then Gary said he's not seeing that bug when he tests. So that's where it is from my perspective. Okay. Well, well, that's that, the, that's the bug that I know they them. the bug that I know they do have is that a very very small number of people don't get a an access point created when they boot their device. And no, that's different. That, that's a different. That's problem. the only that's one that I know about. Computer. So yeah. I don't know what the other bug is. But yeah. Yeah. If you go back here, I can read you the Panacor response if you'd like. I, I thought you were following the channel. Uh, so Panacor said way back when when I reported this. Yeah. Okay. I understand. That. We can take that. You, why don't you take that offline? Because anyway, yeah. So the point is, to the yeah. process because it's about yeah. losing a Wi-Fi signal and reconnecting, right? So that's that's not the right. process related. So let's just leave that for now. Um, yeah, and even I was going to say even the stuff that Derek was just talking about before. Like I feel like that's that's not MVP. That's you know if if your Wi-Fi connection goes down in the middle of the night and Minecraft like Minecraft doesn't know about it. Like I don't feel like that's the most critical issue, like compared to Okay, so here's well but here's here's I can't what you're set my Wi-Fi up in the first place. Yeah, this is what you're missing. So this is Julian Hartmer's response from the Panacord dev channel to my report. AW Connect does not restart the cat we, uh, so it says AW Connect does not restart the captive portal after entering wrong credentials. To bug an AW Connect, I'll look into it. So then he was responding to your stuff, whereas he might have gotten confused. A little bit later, he says, we have identified a regression in AW Connect, which stops the captive portal from starting up. We are investigating when and what triggered the regression because that Connect container hasn't been touched for 10 months. We're rolling back the AW Connect to a previous state, which I've been testing today while we're investigating. This should get rid of the bug where the captive portal does not spawn. You should get the update on my latest daily Mycroft daily build. Ken Smith, the code you're working on should still hold on. Uh, okay. See, so I wonder if they're actually related uh, because they're still both about the, rollback. You know, I guess, yeah. the, the AP coming up um, and. So under you know under normal circumstances, um, the AP comes up for most for the vast majority of people, and they can connect fine. Um, at least for me, if I enter the wrong credentials, um, the the access point comes back up after you know after it tries to connect, it fails to connect, and the access point comes up. Um, currently, we don't we can't detect that. Like we're not detecting that, and then presenting to the user that you know that that's happened. Um, but quietly in the background, if you go and look, then the access point should be back up there. So I wonder if it's the same bug that, you know, is sometimes preventing that access portal from coming up in the first place, may also prevent that access portal from coming up 
um, on a subsequent attempt. Maybe. Right. So they but sent you a new. Process. They sent you a new AW Connect uh, build, right? So we're using the we're using the re, the the ten month old version at this point, right? In our builds. Yes, that's my idea. Okay, so were you able to verify that that addressed the problem, the, like the one user who reported it, or two users maybe? Uh, no, not yet. No. Okay. Okay. So, because yeah, Julian, yeah, Julian was managed to hear order. it as well, so I was kind of waiting for him to validate that it was actually, you know, working in production. Uh, okay. So, so I think the higher order issue is, and you kind of fluffed over it a little bit. So yes, if if you mistype your password during bring up, it will not connect. It won't tell you anything. It won't change screens. And it's left to the user's devices to figure out that that's indeed what's happened. And he should return to the access point and try it again. So if you and Derek are fine with that process, no, no, no. So I wasn't we'll saying I'm fine with that process. I'm saying, but I thought that was the whole point of the information gathering was that we would then, um, I thought you were trying to determine what all those different status messages were um, so that we can detect that and say, hey, you know, the, the, the authentication failed. Try and enter your password again. But yeah, I the mean, the thing that, that is, I was saying that we that's exactly shouldn't, shouldn't get to is like, I've, I've successfully shouldn't necessarily get to in this first in this first iteration is like I've successfully connected my device to the internet and five days later the power in my house goes out and my my Wi-Fi um, router you know takes a few minutes to boot up and it's it's slower than my Mycroft device and so then Mycroft loads and can't find the um, can't find the internet. Uh, and what do we do in that circumstance? I, I feel like that's a separate issue. So, yeah. Well, that's indeed a different problem. And let's just discuss that real quickly so everybody's clear on that. So we have a race condition. If you bring up, if you, if you have a power outage or if you powered everything up at the same time, we have a race condition and that the Mark II will not in some cases, in many cases, find your real access point, your real wireless router to connect to. And again, the only way out of that is you personally detecting that circumstance and unplugging your Mark II and plugging it back in again. So the only issue here from a higher order perspective was can we do better than that, right? On both cases. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's an, it's still an issue. I, I just feel like it's that we can break it down into first boot experience and subsequent Wi-Fi issues. And to me, the first boot experience is a more important piece of the puzzle than. Well, I I don't have any I don't have a horse in this race, but my point is all of this ties into probably where Chris V is kind of uh, hung up right now on what should he be doing next? Are we good? Should we restructure something? Do we have an issue? You know, where are we at? Okay, well, the, the boot sequence is more than just the Wi-Fi, right? There was a whole bunch right. of problems with the boot sequence. Yeah, all I'm saying is in my, in my in the document that I have written or that I've been working on, there is a hole between all of the processes are initialized, pairings, or I have to check whether or not pairing the, the device is paired. There's a gap in there about internet connectivity, and I don't know what we're doing about that, and what what our what our path forward is. What should we put in the document about that? And I don't know. It sounds like we don't even know yet. So that's fine. If that's what where we're at, I just I'm just trying to figure out where we are because I've been gone for a week. Okay. Yeah. Here's here's where we're at from my perspective. I can I have a script. I don't know that it's the final version of it. There's a script now in the build that is monitoring the Wi-Fi status, and it runs pretty quickly. Uh, so I suspect it fires off pretty early in the process. It, it kicks off right after the guy that checks for pairing every second, which is also kind of insane. Uh, but the point is, I can tell you pretty early in the process um, when we have an internet connection. In other words, I can fire off a message on the message bus that says, well, let me, let me take that back. 
I can fire off a message on the message bus early on that says, I believe we have acquired Wi-Fi. We have a Wi-Fi connection. I can fire that message off and I can get that off pretty early in the process. If that solves our problems, we're good to go. If not, then let's talk about it. That solves part of it. <laughs> to, to, to be clear, um, we need, and this is, this is part of the document, I believe, that, that Chris is talking about. We need to make a distinction between I am connected to a Wi-Fi network and I am connected to the internet. Because and that's what, the wi -Fi, that's what the Wi-Fi skill does now. The Wi-Fi skill now, if you look at it, really just tries to ping the Google name server and then it tries to fetch a page from an HTTPS website. And if it's successful, it says, I am connected to the internet. Okay. I mean, that's fine. There, there's a few more steps to it. Um, yeah. I, okay. Uh, okay. I'll document what I think should be happening. How about that? You can tell me if, it's not, if that's the way it's been. That sounds great. Okay. I thought we'd uh, gone through this in pretty painstaking detail already, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to, you know, I mean, how long, you know, I was talking to Michael earlier, like, questions are still swirling in my mind. Like, how long do we, you know, after this, all the services are initialized. If we don't have internet connection at that point, is that too early? Do we have to wait another couple of cycles to see if we really don't have one? I'm, I'm, con I'm confused. Yeah, so that, and that's in the code I gave Gez as well. After like six minutes of no Wi Fi, it automatically reboots the Mark II. Now, I don't know if we want to keep that. I think that's what Gez was speaking to earlier. Okay, well, let's go back to the uh, very, okay, yeah. We're not gonna solve, for, first of all, we're not gonna architect a new system in a discussion like this. So let's not- No, no, I mean, um, yeah. But... Let's go back to make sure that when we're, just go back to the tickets. Like we, we created a series of tickets that each address a very specific problem. Let's make sure we're addressing those problems without introducing new ones. And we should be making the progress we wanna make. Um, so if we don't have things outlined in tickets clearly enough, then, you know, let's have a discussion around that and, and, and fix that issue. Well, let me put it a different way. I, I put in what I think is potentially needed to get that documents process flowing, right? We, we said we wanted an indicator of whether or not we had connected to a Wi-Fi network as part of that process. And so I wrote the code to do that. Now, the question is, do you want me to take it further and have it connect to the message bus and send a message. Do you want me to have it right to the file system somewhere? Do you want to keep in the reboot, the automatic reboot logic it has or pull it out or whatever? But at that point, at this point in time, I guess my feedback would be I've, I've done what I think is kind of where we're at until somebody tells me specifically what they want me to do more. Okay. Like that would involve timing and response to that knowledge. Yeah, I think so. What Chris is working on was related to, um, you know, waiting for that message, right? We, we, we were, we put in the document, okay, we want this message so that we can do this thing with it, right? So then, you know, I guess Ken's asking, okay, well, where do we, where do you want this message to live? I've got a little script I can run. We can put it in, in different places. So does it belong in the Wi-Fi skill? Yeah. Does it belong in the how? Should be part of core? Should we you want me to fire up a message on the message bus? Yeah. Well, you know, we by we already spec that we want a message on the message bus. So definitely we need to do that. The question is where does that code live? So. Yeah. Right now it gets it gets uh executed pretty early on. It's in the startup.sh script, which runs okay. early. It's literally uh, but yeah, but if you bring it into the system, then you have the issue that when does the place you brought it in get fired up, right? Well, and startup does has done SH doesn't have a message bus connection, right? So there's nothing, there's no way in there to actually send a bus message that says what happened. Well, I can certainly, I, I can certainly build some code code to connect to the message bus and wait until it comes available. I don't know that that's what we want to do. Um, that's no. kind of what I'm saying. In other words. I did okay. the, the debug stuff, which said, here's the messages we can get. I'll be able to, once I burn a build and, and do a run, uh, further uh, determine if that's it or if there's more. 
uh, and then I can, you know, we, I can do whatever you want me to do with that information. Well, I, I, if I recall correctly, we had said that that we thought that that logic should live in the HAL. So, if which you is to, right now the enclosure, which is the enclosure now. Yeah, because we're not building a HAL, but yet. Right. right. So yeah, it should live in a non-existent HAL. So I'll put it in the enclosure, right. and that's fine. And right uh, now, I've been putting most things in the Mark II enclosure too, just so as not to upset other enclosures. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that's great. But again, there's the whole the semantics, right? Like if I send that message out, who's listening for it, and what's the structure, you know, and and how long, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. That's that's what I think mm -hmm. is is missing from what I read in the spec the last time was, okay, so a message should, should be sent on the message bus. Well, okay, you know, okay, is let, that let it. Me, let me yeah. document and write some more stuff around that because as we yeah, yeah. met Michael on Monday was. I think we need a little bit more detail and document about how that process works so that we're all clear on it. Yeah, I mean, it could be a directed message. It could be a broadcast message, right? It could be to a specific place or not. Um, you know, it could have, it could contain other information. I don't know what you want, yeah. Yeah, well, okay. So we'd also defined a new Mycroft is ready uh, signal to be sent out, right? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we need to define what that means. And all of these services, since they're all loosely coupled, Need to boot up into a state where they're, and this is you know, can be a very straightforward, you know, simple two, two or three state state machine where they go from boot sequence to waiting for Mycroft to be ready to going into the next logical state that they should be in, whether it's, you know, just doing their thing or waiting for another signal from a different service or whatever, you know. So, um, and that's that's I think the, at the crux of what, you know, Chris was doing is that. There was a whole bunch of mess around, for example, the skill startup, right? How uh, And so that's why he went into the skills. And that was the, the skills were checking for whether or not we had an internet connection, which didn't make any sense. And and so that's what, you know, um, that's what Chris was doing. Just some, some little light reorganizing there in terms of uh, making sure that the skill boot up process was just literally just that and nothing else. It was just the skills loading and, and that's it, right? And then it can have a little state machine that says, okay, skills are loaded. There can be some something. I don't know where it lives. We don't, it doesn't, I would, someone has mentioned like the reviving the supervisor idea, but we don't need that for this. Something in core just says, oh, okay, well, this service is ready and this service is ready and that one's ready. And, you know, all four or five core services are ready. Then Mycroft is ready. Okay, Mycroft is ready. Now you can start to look for, oh, is the internet ready? Because, and whoever's emitting the, Internet is ready signal shouldn't even try to emit that until it knows that Mycroft is ready, as the Mycroft core system is ready, because until that that signal is emitted, no one's listening to anything, right? Uh, so no, there can be no no real traffic on the bus uh, that's not associated with a bring up of core um, until Mycroft says I'm ready, right? And then after that, we can start listening for like the internet's ready and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's. That's where we need to get to. And, and I think I've got a branch of code that's basically that like I've got all that initialization stuff up to Mycroft ready done. Okay. And that's where I'm and so that now I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, now I have to start asking that question. How do gotcha. I get it? I, yeah, I've got all that I got and, all that what does, and what does Mycroft is ready mean? It means that it can listen. Now the system is ready. So that what all that services is, are initialized. No, 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 no. So let me, let me ask that you can now way. emit the internet is connected message and someone will listen to it. That's what it means. Actually, I think we need to find it as well, Mycroft started message because it's not yeah. necessarily ready for use. Yeah, no, no, you're started. right. Started, yes. Let, let, me, let me ask the question a different way. So the concept of Mycroft being ready is predicated on reception of a certain minimum set of signals, right? Yes, but those signals are de defined sort of internal to core, right? They shouldn't rely on anything that is outside of the little box that's running on your desk. Yeah, that's fine. So my question is, Chris V, I take it you've built something that's collecting those signals and you've gotten to a point where you're ready to launch and you haven't gotten any of the signals that you're waiting on. Is that kind of what you're saying? Because I think no, I'm that's where we must be the last time. come over the bus. The bus doesn't require an internet connection. I've got every every process starts, gets through its initialization phase, 
and I, I get all of them together. Okay, everything has been initialized. And now I'm omitting this Mycroft started event. Now what? Right. Now, okay, now we need to trigger. Uh, well, right. So the question is, how did we? How does the system currently go from whatever it's doing to the point where, um, you know, we trigger the Wi-Fi setup skill and the pairing skill, right? Like, what is kicking those off? Those were clearly somehow kicked off, probably somewhere in the skills manager or something, right? So we need to replace that logic with something very simple that just does the exact same thing, right? Yeah, and that's it what I was going to do. I was going to replace it. Well, I it, think right? that's what Chris B said he had done, right? Yeah, no, I think he, he removed the stuff from the skills manager that didn't in the skill loading process that didn't belong there, but it doesn't got put back into a more sensible place yet. So what I'm hearing. Yeah, hold on. Chris V, I think what you're saying is you're ready to launch the skills and, and, and move forward from Mycroft Ready's perspective. Um, you're just not getting what you need to make a determination that Mycroft is indeed ready. Is that correct? Because well, I thought I mean, that's what, what we right wanted, now, and one of those things was connectivity. No. Yeah, and what I can do right now is just reuse whatever connectivity logic we have. But the question then becomes, okay, that's what we have now. Is that going to give us a good boot up sequence or not? You know. Yeah, and that's why I deferred to Derek and Jez on that, right? Yeah. Okay. But I, I thought you were waiting for what I did, which was. As, part, as one of the many signals that your central point is gathering, one of them was, do I have a Wi-Fi connection or not? An internet connection, yes, to be clear. Well, okay, internet connection is, is above what I did and below you, and that's in the Wi-Fi skill. So it sounds okay. like you're at the point where you could just launch the Wi-Fi skill, is that right? In theory, yes, I could launch the Wi-Fi skill directly after Mycroft started gets emitted. Um, question is, is that what we want to do? I mean, I certainly can do that if that's what it works today. I'm not sure the Wi-Fi skill is the best place to be checking for internet connectivity. Um, yeah, okay. Well, you and I are in sync. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know the answer to your question. I'm just well, saying I understand where you're at. And that's where, you know, the whole how much, how far do we go question comes into play. Do we just go ahead and launch the Wi-Fi skill and see if that you know does okay. what we need it to do, and then or do, or do we? Say, yeah. So, so Chris needs Chris v needs somebody to answer his question. I'll, I'll make sure <laughs> the questions are delineated in the document, and then we'll answer them later. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So, yeah, from my point of view, what I just heard is that there's a we're at an interesting point because Chris has cleaned up the boot sequence to the point where um, we've gotten rid of you know these things that were sort of just stuck in at various places uh but um but now we need to take those things that were happening and put them in a more logical place um and because we have a set of loosely coupled services that are comprised you know the core experience um there isn't really a logical place for fire off this skill and then fire off that skill or right? like really basically need a boot sequencer almost a boot sequencer skill maybe, right? Or maybe it belongs in the, in the how. Um, actually, well, I, I think what we need is, is skill. I think what we need is logic somewhere that's gathering these signals and making a determination that the minimum number of signals required has been met to fire off the systems ready. And my done. question to Chris Lee would be, no, other than done. the Wi-Fi connected signal and other than the internet connected signal, I, I guess all you need at this point is the internet connected signal. And that is going to be a combination of whether the Wi-Fi is connected, whether you've got a uh, a valid clock set, and then you. It, so at your point now, you're kind of in the position, if I'm not mistaken, where you're at, is you should fire up the Wi-Fi skill and wait for it to tell you it's connected to the internet. That's where I think you're at. Hmm. Yeah. There's no. Okay. I, I think I think Chris, what you're looking for is. It, is the the mark two skill i think i think the stuff belongs in there no maybe taking his head no i, I agree with some, you. some people think it belongs in the enclosure but you know I... yeah i was going to put it in the enclosure but i think it belongs in the how long term <laughs>
I, 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 I think, think I think so too because I, I think it will differ. It, like it might differ depending on the on the hardware you're using, for example. So well, like, the Mark II and the that's why I'm I, I yeah. yeah the Mark II skill and the how are both dependent on the Mark II, right? So they are. Yes, it doesn't matter to me whether. But it's I, but I would like to my 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 personal bit like the thing that one of the things that we've talked about over the last how many months is the the desire to to keep the skills to actual user interaction stuff. And so the idea is to, that we should be pulling more and more things out of the Mark II skill, which was kind of used as a dumping ground of, you know, let's put things in here that should go in the Mark II because it was a nice, easy place to stick things. Um, yeah. But. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll write what we've talked about up in a document so everyone's clear. And if I have questions still, I will make sure they are noted in the document. Okay. And okay. we'll move on. All right. So uh, just so I understand, um, basically what you've done is refactored some stuff. So when you actually uh, push this out for us to all test, we shouldn't actually notice a difference, really, um, a, a, a noticeable difference. Uh, is, is my assumption, right? There's no, there's no yeah, yeah. functionality, right? All that, the functions are the same. They're just in different places. Right. Now, maybe it'll be a little bit more reliable in some sense, but. Well, and the only, some, another difference will be that, you know, like I've, I've gone through the skills um, manager thing and I'm, I'm trying to get rid of every place where it needs the internet up until, you know, the point where we want it to need the internet. Right. There are a couple places I had to, I had to touch for that. Mm -hmm. It actually tries to hit the internet three or four times. <laughs> Any initial okay. process. I thought it was one, but it's more than one. Yeah. Okay. So, hey guys, I got to run, but I did want to interject real quick. Um, we do still need some feedback, I think, and you know, Ken's mentioned that. Uh, so prompts to let the user know that mm -hmm. the Wi-Fi is restarting. You know that they've failed. Something failed. They put in their their Wi-Fi credentials wrong or something. And let's try again. We do actually have some pre-recorded messages around that. Um, I just don't know if that's that's broken or if that's not working or whatever, but we need that back. And then I, you know, Chris, Chris, you and I talked about this, this idea of maybe just putting a spinner or a, a loading bar between um, when you've entered your credentials and the success connect um, success check mark. Uh, there's just a long time that could take a while. And we, you know, um, just yeah. some indication that the that it's working. It's trying. They're like you know, just saying trying to connect and then showing some progress there. Yeah, we um, we documented that as a need in Hawaii, and there was another screen as well that we documented. Okay, uh, if you guys got got that somewhere, if that's in your doc, Chris. Um, okay, cool. I'll take a look. But I think I think that's all we we really need. Um, of course, more testing will might uncover some other things missing. But by this time tomorrow, I'll have a new version of that document that we can talk about. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. All yeah, right. Like, see you guys. Around, around that circle like six times. But okay. Thanks, Derek. Um, and maybe maybe okay. Michael can help me finish that or re go through the, to the next version of that document <laughs> so he can understand. Sure. Yeah, I, I like the idea of the the pair programming. Uh, just to you know get him up to speed and throw him in the pair, end. pair documenting. Yeah. Can documenting can good. do you have a did you document the the debug signals you mentioned um, anywhere? Is it just that script? Or is, is yeah, there it's just in that script? It's just in that script, and they're uh, they're pulled out of the uh, WLAN zero device. Okay. Is that in the Mark II branch of Core right now? Uh, it, it's up to Gez. Uh, it should be in the latest build. Um, no, can I ask for it to get dropped directly into slash up slash micro? So at the moment, it's in the GitLab um, as, a, as a file include. Well, I assume we can we can access the dbus through Python directly too, right? So if we could that's put this what, in that's the what it's doing. Scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, okay. It's a it, it's a startup a shell script that that launches a Python script. So, oh, also okay. Yeah. Is that in the eleven twenty five build, or do I need to wait for a build to happen tonight to see it? Uh, eleven. I need to double check the date, but if you just ls slash l slash mycroft, there'll be like a net check dot. Okay. Script or something. Yeah. But just to be clear, the Mark II stable link in dev team 
if I burn an image from that, we'll have this script in it and it'll run at boot, correct? No, no, you need the Matu latest, not Matu standard. That's in the team channel. Oh, well, where's Mark two? Where's the link to Mark two later? In I'll, the team channel. I'll send it to you directly. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So if I burn that, that'll be in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and if anybody wants to see the code, I mean, besides in the build, just ask me or get email you me or Jazz. We I email you. It's not that big. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, all right, so uh, I unfortunately have to go pick up my kids at school. Um, so, uh, but I think it would be useful to uh, do a quick recap of the um, the sprint status. Um, and it uh, seems like Ken's kind of at a stopping point. Do you do you know what uh, what are you, what are you working on next, Ken? Fixing the TTS problem. Ah, right. Okay, so you got stuff to do. Well, then you can hold off on the reviewing the sprint stuff until tomorrow. Okay. Um, unless there's, uh, I guess the, the one thing I will say is, just double check that no one's waiting on a a, a PR review from you, so we can get any code pushed out that's been done. Sounds like I have one or two to do for Gaz, and I'll do that. So. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, welcome to the team, uh, Mr. Hansen. Thank uh, you. And uh, yeah, they're, they're um, not all this long, I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is yeah but I'm not here. Not this long. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of sausage grinding here, so that's good. Yes, there is. <laughs> all right, well, I will uh, I'll leave you guys alone tomorrow so you can get some more work done. All right, <laughs> see you later. Thanks, Thank you guys. See you.